welcome to the South African Civil Society Information Service. I'm Fazila Farouk in Johannesburg. South Africans are going to the polls next year to vote in the country's 2014 general election. After two decades, the country's governing tripartite alliance is probably not as strong as it once was. Given the fact that the ruling ANC has not quite delivered on the promise of a better life to poor South Africans. Now, related to the dissatisfaction within the ruling alliance structures is the fact that there are lots of new political movements and parties that are emerging on the ground in South Africa. One, for example, is disgruntled former leader of the ANC Youth League, Julius Malema's new political party, the Economic Freedom Fighters. Now, with the emergence of all these new movements and parties on the ground in the run-up to the elections next year, what we have um, is far more choice available to people in terms of seeking to find a party that much more closely represents their aspirations in life and you know, them having the option to vote for that party. But what kind of freedom do people really have on the ground when um, they're out there thinking about who to vote for, when new players come into the political arena and try to woo uh, voters away from dominant parties in particular areas? It's not as cut and dry as, and as simple as many of us might think it is. Um, the situation is pretty fraught on the ground, particularly in poor communities, because they represent the strongest and largest voting bloc in the country. They have the power to change the, the face of politics in South Africa and the nature of our democracy. With us in the studio this morning, we have David Bruce. David is an independent researcher who's currently doing some work for the Community Agency for Social Inquiry and the project they're focusing on actually looks at how poor people or poor communities are engaging with the political process in the run-up to the 2014 elections. Welcome to Saxus, David. Thanks. I'd like to talk to you about an article that you wrote last week in the newspaper, in the Mail and Guardian. You, you talk about political intolerance and your article specifically talks about the ANC engaging in coercive action um, to retain its majority and to ensure that people continue to vote for it. Um, can you talk a little bit about what's happening on the ground, you know, with the new shifts and changes um, in the political landscape and, and, and why it is you looking at political intolerance in, in particular? Right, okay. Well, I, I think um, just the, 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 the first thing to say is that at, at this point we don't know uh, what's going to happen next in, in next year's election. That um, in, in the 2009 election, the, the ANC's um, share of the vote was 65.9%. And the, at this point, it isn't clear that... Um, that um, the ANC um, will, um, you know, lose a, a significant proportion of, of voters' support. So it might, it's, it's not implausible that it might even strengthen its position. Um, but I think what the, the, the project um, is, um, the, 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 the basis for the project is, is some kind of sense that there is uh, the potential, or there is the likelihood of greater contestation um, uh, and uh, around um, the, the, the 2014 election. And so also in addition that um, in some ways, uh, insofar as there has been contestation in previous elections, it's in some ways been around um, the, the vote of more affluent South Africans. And so, and so what seems to be likely is that increasingly in the future we will see greater contestation around um, uh, uh, the, uh, with, with the parties um, jockeying for the, the support of, of poorer people. In some ways, um, well, I, I think the, 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 the fundamental point is that poorer people far outnumber wealthier people in South Africa and and so um, 
if parties are um, serious about contesting power in South Africa, they have to be. Um, they have to to, to take seriously um, the, the the challenge of of. of of winning the support of poorer voters. Some of the parties that we have seem to be more explicitly orientated towards um, uh, winning the support of, 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 or, uh, of, of poorer voters, such as um, the Economic Freedom Fighters and, and the Workers and Socialist Party. But um, you know, some of the part, uh, a party like the DA, um, the Democratic Alliance, has um, uh, managed to establish itself as the major opposition party, but um, the sense is that um, in some ways it's reached some kind of ceiling in terms of um, in the, the amount of support that it can obtain if it purely um, focuses on, 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 um, on the kind of middle class or more, the, the, the vote of more affluent people. And so, and so the, the, the question is, um, you know, uh, because I think from the perspective of many middle class South Africans, there is a sense of uh, political freedom in South Africa that, that, that um, at election time, people are free to, to um, vote for the parties that they wish to vote for. But um, I think the, 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 there is some kind of something of a tendency amongst more affluent South Africans to um, to assume that um, their own experiences are shared by all people in South Africa. And there is some reason to believe that um, the, the, the level of political freedom that, that more affluent South Africans enjoy isn't enjoyed by people in, poorer, uh, in, 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 in all poorer communities, at least. Now, in the article that you wrote in the Mail and Guardian, I mean, you, you single the ANC out in that article in terms of the party that the most politically intolerant? The, the, the focus of this project that, that, that we're involved in is um, on the um, position of, of, of poorer voters, firstly. And so it's interested generally in the issues that they face. But in relation to it, its primary focus is on questions to do with um, political intimidation. And so, um, it, in, in theory, um, all parties in South Africa are in some ways opposition parties because the, 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 ANC, the ANC is the dominant party, but there are areas where it is not the dominant party. And, so, and there are areas where ANC members themselves, um, as far as I'm aware, do face intimidation from other parties, particularly in KwaZulu-Natal. So, so, um, so the, 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 the general concern of the project is with this question of, of political freedom. And so insofar as people who wish to support or vote for the ANC are deprived of the chance of doing so, um, or, or, or feel intimidated as a result of, of, of um, uh, supporting the ANC, um, you know, the, 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 the concern of the project is as much with, um, with, with, with their right to, to freely exercise their vote as with the right of any other voter. But the, 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 the truth of the matter is that the ANC is the dominant party in South Africa. Also that the ANC is not a foreigner to the practice of intimidation. The ANC, um, in the 1980s and, and 1990s, the ANC, you know, what, what people refer to as the armed struggle was a bitter um, uh, struggle of involving violence and, and the use of intimidation by people on both sides. You know, one shouldn't be surprised uh, if, if, um, to find that, 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 that the ANC, um, as a party, um, continues to be linked to intimidation. And so, in some ways, what the project is interested to explore is to what extent is um, intimidation or other types of coercive practices still a feature of, of um, the experience of voters, particularly poorer voters in South Africa. The, the one thing is just that we do have a problem of political killings in South Africa. So, and um, that up to this point hasn't really been associated with electoral politics. It's been associated with, with 
Um, well, no, it has been associated with electoral politics in KwaZulu-Natal. So, so some of the uh, political killings that have taken place there um, have, um, you know, taken place in the build-up to elections and have been um, understood as, 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 as related to um, electoral contestation. But many of, the, many of the political killings are also understood to, to take place um, um, are understood as intra-party political killing. So they're, they're, they're rivals within political parties um, killing each other. And, and so. The evidence that we have is that in certain circumstances people will go to the, ex to the extreme of killing each other in order to, to be able to position themselves, um, uh, best position themselves in order to, to um, um, be able to have access to political power in poorer communities. I'd like to move to the issue of, you know, what's happening to voters on the ground in terms of intimidation that voters might experience in the run-up to the election. What's happened to date, given the fact that there are a whole range of new political players on the ground? I mean, how is that affecting the way voters engage with the process and their, their freedom and ability to engage with the process. Right, okay. Well, you see, again, uh, it's, a, it's an issue which really hasn't been explored. I think in some ways there has been this assumption, um, potentially a, a, what, what I understand is partly a kind of type of projection of the experience of middle class people, that intimidation isn't really any longer an issue. What has also been a bit of an issue quite recently, for instance, in relation to the election in Tlokwe, is this issue of, of vote buying. As far as I understand, the allegations are that um, the, the ANC, um, through the Department of Social Development, has um, been involved in distributing food parcels in the, in the um, Tlokwe area, and that, that is specifically, that the allegation is that that is specifically intended as a means of, of, of guaranteeing or, or trying to ensure that, that they are able to retain their, 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 their position uh, of, of dominance uh, there. I've also heard that um, in Klokwe, somebody wearing a DA t-shirt had right, their okay. t-shirt ripped off them. That's right, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, and uh, there, there, there are reports of that kind of thing in, in other areas as well. Final question on this issue. Are South African voters in poor communities free to choose who they want to vote for? I don't think that they are entirely free to choose who they want to vote for. Um, it's not quite clear. Um, I, I think there are many poor communities where there is a high level of freedom, but there are many others where um, the, the um, established system is one where a dominant party um, governs in that area and where um, people are afraid to openly express um, um, support for other parties. And um, incidents like the t uh, incident that you were talking about at Tlokwe, where uh, a person who is wearing the t-shirt of an opposition party has the t-shirt um, ripped off, uh, you know, has his t-shirt ripped off, is the kind of, um, you know, one kind of political practice that, 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 that um, um, reinforces the message that, 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 that people may face adverse consequences if they, um, particularly if they openly um, support parties other than, than the parties that are dominant in the area in which they live. David Bruce, thank you very much for joining us at Saxis. Great, it's a pleasure. Thanks for inviting me. To this. And thank you to our listeners and viewers for joining us at the South African Civil Society Information Service. Remember, if you want more social justice news and analysis, you can get that at our website at saxis.org.za.